tell about the sleeping tactics that resulted in your 2008 Iditarod win over the four-time champion Jeff King? Yeah, that's a um, pretty famous story, actually. And it's an old school move that uh, is not uh, it's not in the rules. You can, there's nothing saying you can't do things like that. What it was basically is um, him toying with me for, for several days, having the faster team. Uh, I was in the front, and he, and he was just trailing me. And uh, we got to a place called Koyuk. I took off all my gear and I stuck it in front of the uh, uh, Toyo stove. He fell asleep with his feet on my boots. So that when I took my boots, he would wake up. And I started thinking, that's pretty, that's smooth, you know? Good move. Now I've got 48 miles to come up my own move. <laughs> and that's all I did. I figured out at, the, at that moment that no matter what I did, he was going to do the same thing. He had the pastor team, so he's just going to basically trail me till we got to the front street of Nome, and he'd go running by me and kind of, you know, show me up or whatever. Well, I'm not one to give in or, you know, concede it to him right at this point. Uh, it was pretty obvious he was going to beat me, but I ain't going down without a fight. I figure if I get to, to Elam and my dogs are bedded down, he's going to stay. If not, well, big deal. Okay. Um, I don't know how this is all going to work. It's just uh, things I'm thinking through in my head. If I, uh, if I hurry up and get my, my cooker going and, and make it look like I'm staying there for a while, he's, probably, he's going to do the same. So I did exactly that. I, I rolled in there. I got my dogs bedded down. I had my cooker going. And, uh, and it was only in a matter of five minutes before he rolled in. And, and I'll never forget because he's right. I mean, the little checkpoint. Uh, the checker says, are you staying or going? And he said, only if he's going. Are, are you staying? And, and he kind of turned and looked. He's like, yep, I'm staying. So I figured uh, I'm going to go in. I'm going to get all of my stuff off. Like, I'm staying for a while. He comes in, and he's still got all his stuff on. Uh, again, I drink about that, that third cup of coffee. And he lays over by the front door. And now this door is, it's needed oil for about 40 years now. It's right by the front. Uh, it's, um, it's right where uh, you have to go by. Cold air rushes in and he's laying right there with all of his stuff on. Okay, now I'm going to go back and lay down and tell people. So I went and laid down. He went and laid down over here. And about the time my head hit the little pillow, I could hear him snoring. I just gave it a few seconds, and I got up, and I started walking and grabbed my suit, and the, and the race, uh, or the checkpoint guy says, what are you doing? Now, there's cameras, and everybody's sitting there just waiting for something to happen. I said, uh, I got to use the bathroom. He's like, yeah, there's one right there. And I got my suit, and I'm like, uh, I need to check on my dogs. And, and that's all it took. The guy at the table, camera, what are you doing? Where are you going? And I'm like... You know, this ain't going to work if you don't leave that off, for one. Um, just work with me here, you know. And again, I had another little cup of coffee. And, uh, and when I walked outside, see, the one thing that I did before I went in was got my sled completely ready. It's all packed, ready to roll. I looked over at Jeff's, and it looked like a bomb had went off. Yeah. It's going to be at least 15 minutes if he left right now behind me. It's going to be 15 minutes before I can clean this mess up. Uh, and at the time, 15 minutes, would have, that would have been all I needed, you know. So, um, again, big bright light on the camera, and they asked me all this stuff. I'm like, you know, I'm going to try and get out of here. I, I know he's sleeping. I don't know how long. But he's got little headphones in, and he calls it white noise he's listening to. And, uh, again, I'd been there for about an hour. Dogs were curled up. They, you know, we'd been racing hard. I'm like, guys, Let's go. And then they all stood up and they kind of, oh, Dad, what are you doing? You know, we got around the corner there a little bit and uh, psh, off in the darkness we went. And for over an hour, I literally rode backward to my sled. We get to White Mountain and uh, he was 53 minutes behind me. I don't know at this point, I mean, you know, if I can pull it up, but everybody's talking about it up and down the trail, you know. He was not impressed. He was not happy. He was not friendly about it. And he still gets asked about it today, and it's, it's pretty embarrassing for him. But my, my, um, my personal opinion is, even if we had left White Mountain exactly the same time together, 
I would have still beat him. I ended up gaining 20 minutes on him on the last, uh, on the last leg.